I'm going to welcome my very good friend from many years ago, the great Tommy Igo. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. His name's John DeChristopher, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, he's got a podcast. He's going to let me in in a minute. I, man, I've never heard of this guy. Tommy, we're live. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I waited for four minutes for that gag. Oh, like man. That thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Oh, you're I'm, welcome. You're welcome. Had oh. I known you were waiting, I would have cut that my spiel down to at least two minutes, to no more than two minutes. Man, when is he going to let me do this joke? Oh, that was great. It was a great gag. I loved it. I, I, man, I was waiting. I was waiting. You know, how, is it? I, how are you, man? It's so good um, to see you. Oh. It's so good to see you, too. I know. As as we were saying, you know, in, on the text thread we had the other day that it's it's been, I mean, I... I don't know when was it like a Nam show that we last saw each other. I know. Oh, it had to be. It has to be like you know, four or five years ago. It had to. Yeah, be. yeah. yeah. It's, it's been way too long, man. It's great to see. I have you. a. I, it's great to see you too, buddy. I have a picture. I'll send it to you. I might be able to find it and put it. Do you remember we we had dinner at Nam? This is after I'd left Zildjian. This would have been about maybe six or seven years ago. It was you, me, Peter Erskine, Joel Rosenblatt, Steve Smith. Mike Dolbear at the White House in oh Anaheim. Oh my God, yes, yes. And we, and we were upstairs, upstairs yes. in that white that white room with the tablecloth. I remember, yes. I, I absolutely remember that. That was a great, great dinner. Joe Testa, yeah, yeah. yeah. We uh, we, we yeah. drank martinis and drank some good wine. and That was great. And the stories yeah. were flowing, yeah. That was especially, when, like, especially when Peter gets in that mood and he starts, he can really lay out some absolutely incredible stories, you know, yes. so it was yeah. great. Yeah, it was a great group, man. I miss those times. It's funny, you know, we were talking about COVID, and you know, and the um, uh, the the profession that we're in, you know, and you don't realize it until it's gone, you know, that like, yeah, you know, the camaraderie, you know, amongst the guys who you came up with, you know, that you know, uh, you and I. I mean, I'm sure you're going to tell the story. I, I hope you will anyway, because it's one absolutely. Of my favorite ones. Of like how you started with Zildjian and I was your first signing and da, da, da. I mean we grew we grew up together in the I business. Know. I mean we were we were children, you know. I know we had know. no business doing anything that we were doing. <laughs> and and it, that was so great, man. I'll never forget. I, I, I still remember, you know, the Regatta Bar. I remember, you know, that I invited you to the show. I was like, you know, come in. You were like, I'm coming down and. Uh, and I remember like, uh, you know, where I was sitting, I remember the room and I remember us walking out together to the elevator, you know, me too, Tommy, yeah, I can't I, believe. Yeah, incredible. And that was, you know, that it was, was 1989, 89, exactly. 33 years this summer. And I, and I remember it and, and I, I sort of embellished the story. I know I embellish it now because you've become, you're already were, but you, you're a drum superstar. And so I have the right now to embellish the story. And I'll tell people that there were lightning bolts coming out of your sticks while you were playing that night, if I remember correctly. But, but all kidding aside, I, but this is how I remember, because I'm so glad you said that. This is the story. You had called me during the week, and you said, my name's Tommy Igo, and I play in the New York Voices, and I'm playing at the Regatta Bar this weekend. And the Voices were kind of a new, a new band, right? Yeah. And, uh, but it was up and coming. We had GRP. It was like, it was yeah. always, GRP was like a real thing, you know? Absolutely, like, yeah. It was like that, uh, had that that newness about it, you know? Yeah, you know, you guys, you had, you had definitely had support. And you were playing the Regatta Bar, which was, is, still is a premier jazz club in Boston. So you were, you know, you were the real deal. Now, in my own kind of stupidity, I didn't make any sort of connection. So here's this, this young drummer from... New Jersey, who's coming up to Boston to play and invites me, wants to get involved with Zildjian. And I, and you got me a seat right near the bandstand. You got me this great table and I'm yeah, sitting I, there. I think I put you right next to me. I was you like, did. yeah, I'm not you taking did. any chances. <laughs> you put me, yeah, it was, it, no, this was, and it was, I remember I was by myself. I'm sitting there. You came walking out. And the first thing that struck me was that you were, you know, yeah. you're six foot five and six, uh, five and a mullet. And <laughs> you're, you're welcome. <laughs> but a handsome devil, nevertheless, as as everyone can see. And you came out and proceeded to just completely. I mean, the band was was fabulous. I mean, the, the band. But you were just so incredible as a drummer. And and then when we sat and talked as a person, and I just remember 
which still to 33 years later, which still strikes me. Now I'll just back up and say that your dad, the great Sonny Oak, I, I go was a legendary drummer, Woody Herman, um, you know, played, I mean, just a, a legendary a lifelong drummer. Zildjian, a lifelong Zildjian artist. Yeah, exactly. Lifelong Zildjian artist. So in the course of our conversation, you were thanking me for coming out. And I said, man, I'd, you know, yeah, I'd love to have you come up and, and pick out some symbols. And, and you said, yeah, you know, my dad's really close with Armin and Lenny. And I went, wait a minute, is your dad Sonny Igo? <laughs> and you said, yeah. <laughs> and I went, why didn't you tell me that? And you said, no, man, I, I, I didn't want to call up and say, I'm Sonny Igo's kid. I wanted you to come and hear me play and, and, and base your decision on, on my playing. And, and I just thought that was so, that impressed me so much, Tommy. And to this day, it still does, because let's face it, a lot of people would have just done the easy thing and said, either had your dad call or, <laughs> you know, or just say my dad's Sonny Igo. And, you know, I don't know. It's, yeah. Well, you know, it means so much to me that you remember that. And I can't think of anything that would make me more ashamed than riding on his coattails or his name, you know, for anything, yeah. which I yeah. never yeah. did and never would. And and he would be uh, ashamed of me if I had done that, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. and it was never I mean, he never said, don't leverage your name, you know, I, you know, um, and. I mean, it, it just, I mean, the thought disgusts me, you know, I would just never do that, you know, and that's just the way I'm wired, I guess. But um, it's a great, I love that story because it's, it launched our relationship, you yeah, know, and it uh, sure did the, your first signing. And it was my first signing at Zildjian. Like, yes. I best mean, of I all. Yeah. You didn't, and you never told me that. I had no well, idea that you were like, you know, I started, you started the job three days ago. I had no <laughs> idea. You know, so I've been there was, a couple of months. You know, we yeah. Both, we were both holding our cards. You know, yeah, it was, that's it was right. great. You know, that's right. it was great. And and because of that, we have this story now, which is really cool. And you know what, Tommy? Yeah, absolutely. We have this story. And and what made me so proud was I mean, it was not long after that. I mean, it was it was like you started to do so many more things within a short period of time. And I remember Armand and Lenny and some of the people at, at Zildjian saying, Wow, that was a great signing. That you know, that that guy that guy Tommy Igo that you signed is, you know, like he's making, he's making a lot of moves and he's, you know, you, your name was just out there. And, and it made me really proud that like, yeah, that I, I didn't blow it. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's so, you know, but as an artist, like I took it very seriously. It was like, you know, you know, I get asked, you know, we could talk about endorsements, like in the, you know, the bastardization of the idea of an endorsement and what it's become, especially in the drum world. Cause you know, no other instrument category has, all this free stuff that's flying around artists. I mean, talk to keyboard yeah, players, yeah. you know, them scoring in a door. It's impossible, you know, right. The culture of drums is it's a very unique thing. And um, the idea of endorsements are um, misunderstood greatly amongst the people who are like thinking that it's like some sort of, some sort of anything. I know. It's yeah. Nothing. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's a relation for me. It's always been a chance to forge a relationship with an instrument creator and and have and also give them a chance to send me prototypes. And, you know, like I'll put them out yeah. in the field and see whether, you know, like, which I did for Zildjian a million times. I'm still yeah. playing that hybrid, that hybrid ride of Zildjian's. Like I still play that. And it says prototype on it. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it became the hybrid and I still have it out there. And it just it just goes to like kind of cement what I'm saying. The idea of an endorsement. And I tell people, like, don't go to companies with your hand out. Don't like, can I get an endorsement is exactly the wrong thing to do. Exactly. It's like it's basically how can I serve you? What can I do? So Zildjian, when you were telling that story, the whole idea is like putting eyeballs on the product. I mean, you guys are, I mean, you make instruments and you have endorsements with people because you want to get visibility and you want to show off your product and you're proud of what you make, you yeah. know? And you, and you know, guys think about like drummers think endorsements, get gigs. Like, I know. like there's a, or get anything like drummers <laughs> think like who don't have endorsements think like an endorsement is the goal let's it's like they're like trying to get an endorsement you know and if you if you think that way you're not going to get them and right. you need to think of like a musician you need to be out in the field you need to be playing the product in front of eyeballs doing it for real and then start a relationship don't ask what you can get 
start a relationship, you know, and then if you do, if you think of it that way, like, what can I provide? What can I provide a company? What can I give them? Not what can I get, but what can I provide them? If you think of it that way, amazing things happen. You're exactly right. I mean, amen, Tommy. And, uh, you know, it, 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 to you and me, it seems so simple, right? I mean, it seems so kind of obvious, but it, it still amazes me. Now, I've been out of the sort of that world now for a long time, but but I still see it happening. You know, there's this sort of expectation. There's this total, like you said, a complete misunderstanding of how it all works. And and what you just said is perfect. In Sorry. that, uh, <laughs> dog, so the dog is uh, really oh, the- trying to scratch his hot spot, and I just interrupted your story. <laughs> It's going to be a bad thing. He's under my desk right now. So everybody, this is live coming at you right now. John's going to continue his story. Captain is not going to scratch his wound and we're going to be fine. Oh my God. I can't even know where this I'm going. This is coming to you very live. <laughs> for the future. <laughs> oh my God. Of that joke. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. No, but anyway, but what you just said is so perfect because I used to try to explain that to people that if you're playing in front of people, like you said, if you've got eyeballs on the product, whether it's Zildjian or any company, the, the companies will come to you. You know, if you're giving exposure, you're out there on tour, you're, you know, if you've got a gig where you're doing all these things and people are seeing you play and you're influencing them, then the companies will be interested. But like you said, to, to look at it as the sort of end goal is like to get the endorsement and somehow that's going to get you gigs, it's, it's become so kind of twisted you know uh, it has and you know um as far as that twist it's not really the fault too much of the kids who believe that falsehood it's being sold to them and it's being sold to them by people um who are trying to be oracles in this business and they yeah. are false oracles they are giving advice uh from a place of um you know, trying to make themselves look like enablers and, you know, they're mm-hmm. selling basically, you know, they're selling sunshine, rainbows and unicorns. And the whole idea is like, you know, you know, get an endorsement and the whole, and it used to be about getting drum clinics. Yeah. Yeah. Get an endorsement because then you can do drum clinics. That ship has sailed. I, yes. uh, an yeah. invention of a thing called YouTube and it has <laughs> never been the same. I mean, there are still drum yeah. clinics, but there are a fraction of what they used to be. That's right. You know, yeah. And it is not the events that they used to be either. There are less of them. The bigger ones who do like a show, an event, those, those marquee events, those will always be there and be healthy. But there used to be, and I say this all the time about like the business, there used to be a thriving middle class in all of music, drumming. Uh, there used to be a thriving middle class where, you know, you didn't have to do the marquee events. You could do guitar center and Mm -hmm. go out on these tours of like little, you know, small independent drum shops. And it was like, and, and Zildjian, and I know this long because I was with you guys forever is that, you know, back, you know, a couple decades ago, you would put me on the road for two weeks and send me to all these different places, knowing absolutely 200 people will show up minimum at each one. Yeah. And those days are completely gone because now people want to see Tommy Igo shred a kit to pieces. They could just search my name on YouTube and there it is. There it you is. used to have yeah. to go to go see a great player. You used to have to get off your ass. Yeah. And now you don't. You can sit on your couch and the information comes to you, but it's still not the same, no. which is why the marquee events, the marquee events where they're like, you know, like a Dromeo. Uh, started one a couple of years ago. We did one uh, up at 2020, you know, Jared yeah. and all those guys. And he felt the same way. It's like, you know, the Modern Drummer Festival used to be such a thing. You know, it was like, it was like everybody used to really look forward to that. And it was like a, a gathering point, a central point, right, an, right? annual thing. And Jared, you know, to his credit was like, you know what, we're going to need to do that again, you know? And then we did it. And two weeks later, the world shut down, you know? Wow. So it, it, it never got the tail that it really deserved. And it should have been a second one after that, but I'm sure he's going to restart it. I hope so anyway, to have those marquee events, you know? Yeah. Yeah. MD is talking business. about doing that too, bringing theirs back exactly for that reason, like you say, because, you know, I, I think, I think the world needs it. And I think there's, there's a, a, 
some faction of people that really do miss the whether it's a hybrid version of a some amount of in-person and some amount of some amount of virtual but but you know you're exactly right tommy and and me being an old school guy i can't imagine like i can't imagine being um satisfied only with watching you shred on a youtube video i'd want to go and i'd want to be there i'd want to meet you afterward i'd want to shake your hand i'd want to ask you some questions and and i would want to see you like i want to know what's on your mind like yeah like yeah you know because you get questions you meet you meet people you sign their stuff whatever you know yeah you you just perform for them and they come up they shake your hand they usually will tag with a you know uh oh wait a minute Oh. Oh. Yeah, your mic, your mic got a little funny. Wait, wait, wait. What the fuck? What the hell? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what happened. The thing, it just oh. uh, I switched over to a different microphone. Anyway, oh, okay. what I was saying was like you meet people, they come up, they tag a question onto the end of your meeting, you know, and then, I mean, that's those moments are gold. Because yeah. as an educator, yeah. I'm having direct contact with the people who are watching me play. I know what you want to, I know what you want to know. Like, what are you curious about? That's why I've completely changed my clinic format. I have blown up. It's taken me 30 years to evolve my clinics to, and constantly massaging and deconstructing and flipping everything around to arrive at a place now that I feel really confident where it has landed. And I go into a clinic without any preconceived notions at all. And I completely let the crowd guide the educational content wow. because every place I go, there's a different thirst yeah. and I have to be able to adapt. So uh, to your point, yes, meaning face-to-face, eye contact, shaking hands. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. Yeah, I agree. And by the way, there's a young drummer who uh, I've been hearing a lot about lately named David Garibaldi. Oh, watching right now I mean, uh, is he gonna amount to anything he, i mean i i don't know but i'm, I'm hearing things about I mean, him is and it just like ugh. and he said he said great session guys your truthful story blew up your internet um <laughs> but i wanted this is a message for that young drummer named david garibaldi that what's his name i'm sorry one more time what's his name it's uh david, david garibaldi. Garib- garibaldi garibaldi yeah all right i'll make sure i keep my ear out for him keep an eye out for him yeah but he's yeah, gonna be on my show do some, maybe he'll do something in his business Maybe you never know. Oh, can we keep this up? You know, <laughs> you know, you know. Dave is a great example. I saw David at Pace it, you know, and um, uh, you know, I moved out to. The, we've done double drums at Yoshi's together, and you know, yeah. you know, I'm, I love him. Like I'm like, like love, like yeah. love David. Like not, I'm a fan. I mean, I love him. I love him yeah. not only his, his for soul. his drumming and what he gave us. But just him as a human being. Yeah. He's like, you know, he kind of reminds me of Louis Belson. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no one ever had anything bad to say about Louis, which is, can you think about a, such a titanic achievement inside the music <laughs> business? How many people can you say that about? You know, like, yeah. like, like yeah. everyone loves him. David Garibaldi is the same thing. He has this generous love of human beings and music and wants everyone to succeed yeah you know and Super to me positive and, guy yeah, yeah i mean yeah. i'm like i'm sorry I'm, I'm you know fanboying too much but you know drumming is easy being a great human is hard that's where that's where you want to do and yeah. when you put both of yeah. them together like david has i mean he is i'm still I, I love being a fan of his i love it i i love that he's my hero and he's my friend yeah I, I, that's it pretty just makes great me, it makes me happy to be alive that's pretty great. And to play double drums with him oh, has got to be I can't even like, tell you, man, the first time we played, gotta be, I, the first time, you want to see me turn into, like, like I was just like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't even, I was just like, I was like, <laughs> like, you can't even imagine, like, I was just the biggest goof, like, uh, like, uh, like I was the golden retriever <laughs> that was sitting next to him. And I was like, oh my God, it's about to happen. He's going to count off what is hip. He's oh going to count God. off what is hip. David oh. Gabal, he's going to count off what is hip. And I was like completely losing my mind. And I was just like, oh my God. And then he started and I'm, I'm playing along with, I'm, I'm like ghosting. I'm like, I'm like just watching. And I'm watching everything he does. I'm just like, oh my God, this is so incredible. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, and I was just like, I was like non-functional, you know, you know, it was like, 
And I'm like, oh my God. It's like, you know, and I tell my students, you know, have heroes, have, have people that you just love, you know, and then it, it's, you know, and you pick the right ones, boy, you know, the returns come back and, you know, multiplied. Absolutely. Oh man. That's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's laughing. He's, let me I tell you like, about I, the that, man. That was my face. Uh, he knows that was my face. Like, <laughs> I was oh, completely, man. you know, couldn't, couldn't even move, you know. Uh, well, I am going to have him on, whether, David, whether you know it or not, um, pretty soon. Oh, he'll he be, is the he'll man. be here. Yeah, he's, he's he's my boy. You know, is, and it was great. As I was talking about Pace, like I got to see him like in November. You know, yeah, and it was just great to see him face to face. And you know, you know, Pace happened, which was really great. And you know, yes, yeah, you know, it was uh man. You know, like I said, you don't really realize the jab until it's gone. It's the same old story, the same human thing. You know, we're just human beings. You know, we're built this way. We just don't really appreciate it until it's not around. You know. And I was just sitting there with David. I was with David and Scott Johnson. And, you know, I said, man, this is, this is freaking great. And I miss it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been, so have, have you started playing out again with your band? In San yeah, my residency guys? is, my residency is restarted, you know, cause I, great. you know, my career performing wise, you know, I made a decision to only be a leader and not do side man stuff anymore in 2006. And um, uh, so the residency, which is going to be in its, it's going to be its 10th year coming up uh, at Yoshi's. I know it's did 10 at Birdland and 10 at Yoshi's. Um, and uh, that's going to, that restarted last July and it has been uh, a struggle. You know, it's been a real struggle uh, mm -hmm. because of the whole mask thing. And like, you know, uh, uh, you know, people aren't sure if you're playing, like, you know, it got bad again. You know, we, we had this. Yeah. <laughs> talk about a, talk about a tease, right? Talk about a tease in last July. Yeah, you probably remember when the I mask do. came off, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And I was, you know, uh, you know, I was just so happy, and we restarted at Yoshi's and sold the place out, and it was so great. And everybody was just like, you know, hugs and kisses, and you know, we were playing. We played that night like we hadn't played in a year and uh, a half, right? Uh, yeah, like yeah. a year and a half at that point, and you know, incredible amount of time. And we just played like maniacs. Like we were just like, like unleashed beasts, you know, finally out yeah, of their yeah. cage, you know, and they were human beings. And, and it was just one of those magical moments and it only lasted one gig, you know, and oh. then the August gig, everybody was masked up again. Yeah. And now it's just, it's been since August. And now we're, here we are, we're about to do our March, uh, April hit in two weeks, right? April five. And, um, uh, it's now taken that long to get the mask off again. So I'm hopeful that this gig coming up is going to feel more like that last July gig. Yeah. It has been a slog. It's been a slog and it's been hard, like to stay motivated yeah. over this last, you know, especially last nine months or so. Right. Right. I know, I know exactly what you're saying because there was that, like you say, that tease and that just sort of kicked the wind out of everybody's sails. And then, you know, but I, I, yeah, I feel exactly. like, yeah, I feel like now that, um, I, you know, we're going to be living with this thing. Yeah, it's always going like, to be looming. Let's go. Let's yeah, go. let's just, let's, let's just, go. let's just, let's exactly. Go. Everybody, you know, before the vaccine, be responsible. Out, I was like, you know, before the vaccine and all that stuff, I was like, you know, about yeah. doing the right thing. I really was. And I, and people want to wear masks. It's, I don't care. That's fine. But we got to get going. You know, I'm vaccinated. I'm boosted. I'll get boosted again if I have to. It's uh, whatever. We got to live with this. We got to we got to live. We got to live yeah, with this. Thing, yeah. You know, yep. and our school just in California, man, uh, my my kids have just now taken their masks off like last week for the first time. Like they haven't been in a classroom. Wow. They're seniors now and about to graduate. They haven't been in a classroom since 10th grade without a mask. And they're like wow. talking about like, wow, it's like really interesting seeing my friends faces and how they've changed. I mean, I know it's, it's, it broke my heart. I was just like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 that's terrible. I mean, you know? it's, it's, but, it's but better it's, days ahead, better, yeah, days, better ahead. days ahead. And I'm just going to say, you can't look for, backwards. You got to look forwards. You got to right. move ahead, you know, right on. Yeah. I was just going to say, it's, it's hard for you and me. And, and I think a lot of people just really sort of get their arms around that. You know, my, my granddaughter's in the first grade oh. and <clears throat> she just took She's her never been in a classroom without a mask. Yeah, it's just started just re like your like your kids just recently was able to, you know, they took their masks off and everybody now sees how absolutely beautiful my granddaughter is. She's the most oh, beautiful in the class, I mean, obviously. I mean, and, uh, duh. 
needless to say, she's I, Fiona. You know, yeah. you know despite but, no, your DNA, despite, despite, <laughs> despite your DNA, is she is still the most beautiful one. Uh, which is pretty, pretty amazing. So, pretty amazing. Just, just yeah. saying. <laughs> Her mother is really beautiful. My well, son, obviously, to, to, to destroy okay. your DNA. So <laughs> <That's right. laughs> obviously, there was a battle there, and she won. Uh, I love you, Tommy. I miss <laughs> you like crazy, buddy. Oh, this is you see, this is this it's been too long. This has been too long. You know? I know, I know. And I apologize yeah. for everybody when I keep blowing my nose. I'm sorry. Uh, we've had like two hot days in California, and everything's blooming. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You know, I was gonna say like, allergies, like, yeah. There's green dust like on everything around here. I'm like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so jumping back a minute. So so the voices you did when when we met, you're in New York Voices, late '80s. Did that mm -hmm. for a couple of years anyway. I did that right? for four four years. Four yeah. years. Okay. Yeah. I've had very long relationships with every artist I've worked with. You know. Yeah, um, that's a good thing. And, yeah, it's like the companies I've worked with. I've, I've you know, I've. Um, you know, I've, I've had some relationships with different companies and moved a couple times, but I've never had a short term relationship. And I've certainly never had any kind of relationship that ended on a bad note ever. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, just business things happen, you move or whatever. And I have great long term. And, and it just happened again. It just happened again. Mm. Yeah. Hang on again. I don't understand why it's doing that. That is really, really bad. Hang on. Stay right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you hear me yet? I can hear you. Can hear me yet. Um, yep. Yeah. It's still. Um... That is really. Why would that happen? There, there it is. Back. There it is. Okay. That's it's really back. weird. I don't know why that's happening. Um, I'm going to um, uh, uh, turn off my Bluetooth. See if that makes uh, that not happen again. Okay. That might... uh, let's see. Turn that off. Okay. Bluetooth is off. Okay. So still, how are we doing here? Can you still hear me? sounds good. I can good. I can hear you. I can my Bluetooth off oh. so it doesn't auto connect to my AirPods. I don't know why I was doing that. Okay. Okay. There you go. Yep. You're good. Um so so after that, it was it right after that Art Garfunkel that you did, or was that um, was this uh, was I, I remember right that in the nineties. Um uh you know, let's see. After the voices, um, I went to Stanley Jordan. Um, oh yes, yes, and yes. Did a yes. couple years with him. Um yep. You know, touring, we toured everywhere. We did some really interesting countries like Indonesia and stuff. Like, got to really go to some places I hadn't been before. Mm. Um, and then I came back doing, I was subbing on Broadway. I was doing a lot of Broadway, like subbing and stuff like that. And I, I was like enjoying not traveling. And then in 95, uh, that's when I started that 10 year run with Art Garfunkel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So 93, I left the voices 95. And then I did Stanley Jordan for Stanley two years. Jordan. 95. I started with Art Garfunkel. Yeah. And I yeah. didn't, I, you know, I wasn't one of those guys who wanted to have multiple touring obligations. You know, I was really careful about, you know, I had a very um, strategic, I guess is a good way to look at it relationship with touring. Um, I was cognizant of the fact that the road eats a lot of careers and human beings. So I wanted to have a very healthy relationship with it, not an obligatory one. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I only kept one touring artist in my stable at a time, you know, so art and arts was a arts gig was great because yeah. we did a lot of really great big monster 50,000 people festivals and stuff and then we would do smaller like you always play like these really um beautiful theaters you know like uh yeah. you know like the most amazing like Sydney Opera House stuff like that you know and uh so I got to see the inside of all these incredible venues and uh and he never went out for more than six weeks at a time and he never traveled or never gigged more than six months out of a year. Mm -hmm. So um, it was, I had, was able to keep that touring with a growing New York studio live presence and education as well. So I yeah. had both things yeah. going on. And again, that was a strategic relationship that set me up for 97, which started uh, the Lion King. Yeah. <clears throat> That's where I was going. I was going to say yeah. that, that was a, in my mind, that was a huge game changer like well was, yeah. was groove essentials after that am i uh, groove essentials was after that it was uh, after that okay yeah significantly actually uh 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 lion king was it was just a moment in time it was just um a, one of those weird moments where the universe brings everything together um 
And I mean, talent at every key position. It was just uh, a, one of those moments in time. It'll never happen like that again. It was just, uh, uh, I mean, it'll happen other ways, but it won't yeah. happen like that. It was a very unique you know, uh, blow, it really blew up Broadway. Like nothing had been like that before. No, it was no. like the anti-Broadway show. Uh, Julie Taymor famously hated Broadway. She was an avant-garde theater. That was the director of Lion King. And she like hired all non-Broadway people. And uh, that's why I took the gig. So the gig, you know, uh, in 97, I was touring, uh, I'm not, I was, well, I was touring with a uh, different art, a couple different artists, but art. And I was basically playing a lot in clubs in New York and studio stuff. I, I was a, the tip, prototypical New York punk, you know, <laughs> two cell phones, you know, the whole thing, and, you know, and I was like, you know, you know, feeling really good. It was like, things were firing for me around there. Yeah, like yeah, everything yeah. was happening. I had sh stuff going on during the day and stuff going on at night. And, uh, uh, this music director, uh, his name is Joe Church, great, great music director. Um, I met playing the Broadway show Tommy for yes. you know, The Who, right? Yeah. And which was amazing. And that was great. And I was subbing on that and just loving the idea of subbing. And it was really just really great. And he got the MD position, the music director position for um, uh, Lion King. And he was able to call in the key positions that he needed. And one of probably the biggest one was drum set because it's African percussion. Da, da, da. And I said, no. Oh, I didn't yeah, know. I, that. I just no flat out rejected it. He was just saying, hey, "Man," he says, okay. and I went. Was it no. because of the commitment that it would take of like your time? Um, or? Well, no. I just said no because I thought it was going to suck. <laughs> Super genius, right here. <laughs> I want everybody to make sure that you take all your advice from Tommy Igo because he really knows what's going on. <laughs> yeah, super genius. Like I mean, and, um, and uh, literally, I was just like. Pfft. No. And I was like, and he goes, why? And I said, because it's going to be a bunch of people running around in lion costumes. And I don't feel like working at Disney World. <laughs> and uh, I literally said it like that. And, and he was like, he laughed and said, no, he said, there's this crazy lady named Julie Taymor. And it's going to, he said, he said, it's going to be Huge. like sick. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I said, how long is the commitment? He said, nine weeks. All right. And I went, all right, I can, that's not horrible. That's not horrible. It's not like like eleven months or something, you know. Right. And then he said, and I said, where in nine weeks? And he said Minneapolis. And I went, I'm in because Minneapolis is a great music town. It was that yeah, Prince sure. Club, yeah, of the course, yeah, it was, yeah. It, jazz, it was well, Minneapolis was cool. It had good, really good music going on. And I was like, oh man. I was like, yeah. All right, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Right. And. You know, I mean, obviously, everybody knows, knows what happened. Yeah. But the, uh, the funny part about it in Minneapolis, we, we had nine weeks. So I had nine weeks to write the book. And I had to they basically, you know, they gave me a sheet of paper. It had four slashes on it. They had no idea what they wanted. So I had to write the book. And that was what that nine weeks was for. Wow. And John, when I tell you, I oh. thought I made the biggest mistake of my life. When I saw the first rehearsal, like of on stage like mm -hmm. so we would rehearse we rehearsed like 10 hours during the day and then we were off at night and at night they were doing what they call tech you know and they would go like 3 a.m it was like a 24-hour process and they were working on like the stampede scene and all that stuff and i walked in and i was like that's what was what's going on here and i just looked at it horrified i was just like it looked like a first grade musical elementary school level and i was just and i just was like i went oh my god i went Oh no, I want, but what I didn't know was this woman who had this vision, she saw what it was going to be. And she was literally creating this new technology to create these visual effects that had not been done yet. Right. And we were seeing what I was seeing and didn't know was the skeleton. And, yeah. you know, and then as it went along and then we played the four weeks in, we played our first show and you know, did you see Lion King? Right. The yeah, animals, I, come, yeah. The animals come down the road. It's like you play, yeah. you playing all these El great Elton John songs, and it's like it's it's just like you know big, you know, big, you know, playing these. It's just large and immersive, right? And um, animals are coming down the thing, and we're now so playing a when you debut a show, right? It's like when you author a book. You don't know if it's good or not mm. until you release it, and then the public tells you whether or not it's good. Like you can write a book and, you know, put your heart and soul into it. And it doesn't matter if it sells dozens of copies, 
the public has spoken as, as to its you know place. And same thing with the Broadway show. We've been rehearsing four weeks of your life, eight, seven days a week, you know, and now here comes our first preview performance. And it was like as close as I'll ever get to playing like, I don't know, Jumping Jack Flash with the Rolling Stones in Madison Square Garden last. And, and that cacophony of love coming at you like, yeah, like the place just fell apart. Like when they saw the animals coming down and coming yeah, in, yeah, and we we're all and now we're playing that, and people are screaming like this is a Broadway oh, show. Like they're, they're just like and they're they're like, ah! <laughs> like when they see, like they see the giraffes and they're like they're like like and we're playing and we're downstairs. We're you know we can't see the stage right. We're downstairs and you know and we're just like we're like what the fuck is going on? You know we had no idea and and then like, <laughs> we hit the last note and it goes. Boosh, right this thing and i remember this flute player new york guy real sarcastic new york guy great flute player like uh you know wood flute specialist he was going to play 15 different flutes he we hit the last note he looks over at me he goes we're gonna be rich <laughs> <laughs> remember, i'll never forget his face because they were screaming <laughs> And that was like one of those moments. That was like a really great moment. Like, you know, because you oh, have yeah. no idea. You just don't know until you you display yeah. it. And then the public will tell you uh, whether or not you hit a home run or not. Yeah. You know, and that was uh, that was one of the one of the most powerful moments of, of debut I've ever experienced. That's that's what an awesome story, Tommy. And um, oh. and what a, what a success. I mean, that show was sold out on oh, Broadway. It'll outlive, for... us. it'll outlive us all. It'll yeah. Outlive I mean, it's just, it was a moment in time. It was yeah. just the moment. It was just a moment in time, you know. And let's and let's take a second and just kind of come back to what you said. You wrote the you wrote the book for that. You wrote. I the wrote drum the drum book. book. Yeah, the drum, the drum book. book. Was, uh, it, it was you know they. Uh, what happened was they in its original reincarnation uh, before I was hired, they tried to make it um, uh, purely percussion with no drum set. All right. And that was Julie's thing. She said she wanted percussionists in the house. This is part of her vision mm -hmm. and stuff, you know. And she was just like, you know, I don't want any Western anything. No Western. I don't want to, yeah. I don't yeah. want to hear, you know, a hi hat or I don't yeah. want to hear, you know, she's like, I don't want to know sound. I want to hear, I want to be in in the Serengeti. You know, I, 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 I uh, and she was very big on that. You know, that's yeah. her creative flow. And, and they tried to do it without percussion, and it was a disaster. Uh, I mean, without drum set, and it was drum a set. disaster, right? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you're playing Elton John songs with an African influence. You're not playing African music written by Elton John. Right. You're playing pop songs that have African overtones and make that feel, right? Yeah. And you need to have that center to lay the to lay the groove down and then all the African stuff on top of that. Right. So they convinced her to hire a guy. And I, you know, it was, uh, you know, I talked to their music producer and, and they had to sway me to do it. And they said, you have full creative control over the, the book. You know, he said, you're not going to get any writing credit. You're not going to get any money. He said, Disney has spent all their money on everything. Mm -hmm. He said, but he said, you're going to, we want you, you're not going to have to play parts that are given to you. Mm -hmm. He said, we want you to do it. Right. And that was fine with me. I didn't care. And um, uh, so it was that was what the nine weeks in Minneapolis were about. Constant, yeah. fly, you know, and then I had to notate the whole book. And that's what people are using on the road now. Yeah, I was going to say, and that's that is I was just going to say that's become the blueprint for everybody to use. And, and yeah. like you say, I'll you know, the all cast, yeah. And the cast recording is the, you know, won a Grammy and the thing and stuff is like, uh, you know, that became like, yeah, that was like the original stamp. Yeah. You know. And how long did you do it, Tommy? You did it um, fourteen years. Fourteen years. Yeah, I was the principal drummer and um, uh, uh, conductor, uh, right? Assistant conductor, right? Assistant conductor. Yeah, assistant conductor. Yeah, I was. And, and conducting you, is like one of my favorite things. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And you you were able to, at a point you were able to kind of sub it out when you would you could do other things like. Oh what, yeah, the that's Birdland the beautiful band. thing about a Broadway yeah. show. Once you get past the original commitment, Broadway a Broadway gig is uh, one of the most beautiful things to have if you have a hit you know are very few hits so i was lucky you know it, yeah. i mean especially because i said no <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you know but having a show is really great uh because of uh the policy where you can sub out 50 percent, and um that allowed me to go on the road with art yeah. uh when i yeah. you know 
felt like going away and stuff, or if I needed to work on anything, I could take time away and do those things, do other gigs or write whatever I needed to do. Right. So yeah. if the show runs eight a week, but you don't need to play eight when you're the principal, you can actually, you know. Yeah. So, which, which I'm guessing allowed you then the freedom to do the Birdland band too. That was, that was, you wouldn't have, I mean, if you couldn't have subbed yeah, yeah. up the Lion well, the King. The Birdland right? band, luckily the Birdland band did never intersected with Lion King. The Birdland oh, residency. Okay. Yeah. The Birdland residency was on Fridays and it was actually before eight o'clock. So we would play from five thirty to seven thirty, and that was what the residency was every single week. And, um, uh, that was, uh, my, probably my, most intense music win yeah like win like like to to make that a success was sheer force of will yeah. um because yeah. i mean no one was there i mean it was bleak in the beginning i was on life yeah. support john so we started so this story is actually i'm going to tell the story really quickly for everybody who's thinking about doing something of their own mm -hmm. and being a leader and creating and taking full accountability of a success or failure. All right. So there was, I was playing in this band sometimes and it was a guy named Lou Anderson who was an old school big band guy. And we all used to play in this band for practice, uh, you know, just to keep our re reading up. And it was never a serious thing. It was paid like $15. We used to say it pays two bills, a 10 and a five. <laughs> all right. And, um, you know, and, you know, for 15 bucks, right. We But we, the charts were hard and, uh, and we could just, let loose, you know, and yeah. it's fun. And it would be like, you know, it was, you know, five 30 to seven 30. So there were like usually two drunks at the bar and somebody's mom. That was yeah. the audience. Right. And it was fine. And then he passed away <clears throat> and they were going to just X the spot. Kill right? it. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't know. And I went to them and I said, let me have it. And they were like, why it's a dead carcass. And no one wants to be here at that time. I said, let me do it. Right. And <laughs> we had no, there was uh, like, okay, now it's, now it's my thing with my name on the marquee and it's still two drunks and a, my mom, right? It's like, <laughs> and it's as bleak as bleak can be, right? But there was one guy, his name is Merritt Lutz. I hope he sees this. Um, and he was, you know, he was a, like a marching band guy, and a, like he was a kid. And now he's worked at Morgan Stanley and he saw me play and he fell in love. And he was just like obsessed with trying to help me, right? And wow. uh, you know, he would bring people in, and I think he did it under threat. Like he was like, "You're going to come in." And he's like, "Or I'm going to fire you. Bring your girlfriends." You know, it was like, uh, you know, bring your yeah. boyfriends, whatever you got. Bring your friends. He'd come see this guy play, and you know, he would bring like ten people, and he'd bring twenty people. I and every week I was working week to week, and I was always under the threat of being fired. Right? And there was always this like, and yeah. I would call, I used to have my friends call the club from all over the country. <laughs> <laughs> and I would, and they would disguise their voice, and they would say, yeah. and they would say, um, uh, "Is Tommy Igo playing tonight on uh, Friday?" I'm thinking about flying in, and I got a group of 50 people. I just want to know if he's going to be there. All right, and they would say, "Oh, and they would say, oh yeah, he's going to be there." And they would never book anything, but they kept calling, see, "Hey, is Tommy Igo going to be there?" "Hey, is Tommy Igo going to be there?" "Hey, is Tommy," Igo? you know. And it was just like I just just said, just keep calling, just you know, just to let them know oh. people are interested. It was like. Genius. Total scam. Total yeah, scam. But it's, but it's I mean, great. It's like I'm like I'm on. I I'm like I'm like I just need time. Give me time. I'm on. A, just give me a life. And so, um, uh, it, it, you know, all of a sudden there were one day there were like 35 people there. Ooh, nice. I was like, okay, we are finally not outnumbering the audience. <laughs> this is good. There are more than there are more of them than there are of us. Right. And then, <laughs> and I was just pounding, I'm pounding. I mean, every day, just pounding, 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 getting people, putting in new music. I was firing musicians. I was hiring new ones. I was putting up themes. I was like, oh, bam, bam, bam. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> one day, <laughs> this is like such a jazz club moment. Like there were a hundred people there, right? A hundred people in the, in the, in the, wow. In the, I couldn't believe it. I walked in. I was just like, is it like free martini day or something? It's like, it's, <laughs> This can't possibly be him. And I thought the owner was going to be really, and we laugh about this now, who I love, John, uh, uh, you know, John Valenti, who owns Birdland, great guy. But he came up to me. He's like, he's, and, he, and I thought he was going to go, hey, man, this is great. Yeah. Like, right. like that's what a club owner wants, right? You know, he goes, right, right. He goes up to me, he goes, if this many people are going to come see you, you got to let me know. <laughs> 
And I was just like, <laughs> oh, that's, I mean, that's, a, that's a club I'm like, owner. I'm trying to do the calculus in my head of how we arrived there. Right. And he was like, and it was true. It was like, he was freaking out because he didn't have servers. You know, he didn't yeah. have staff. Yeah. And, I'm, and I didn't understand. Like, I'm like, oh. Right. And I went, I was just went, I went, sorry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <You> know? <laughs> and, and oh, great. my and God. Is that great? And oh, then, that's like, so great. six months, we had our first sellout. And then after that, it, like, became, like, you know, oh, the thing. The thing. It was like, the so thing. It was like that pounding. It was like that pounding wow. that went on behind the scenes. I did. I didn't know any of that. I I came to see you two times when it was the thing. When yeah. when you could, I could barely get in. I was there once during IAJE, and you oh, yeah. you told you told me ahead of time. You said, I think you you pulled some strings to get a table for a few of us. But mm-hmm. but you know, and, and we understood. You know, we we bought our tickets and stuff. But you're like, it's Johnny. You don't understand, man. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be nuts. Like you've got to yeah. get there at this certain time because. Yeah, they'll give they'll, your table away. They'll give yeah. your table away. Yeah, and it was so yeah. unbelievable. It was yeah. so. It was jazz club rules. New York jazz yeah. club rules. Like you know, they're like, okay, it's five thirty and one second. Give that guy the table. <laughs> your table's yeah. fine. <laughs> and I gotta say, there's still nothing like hearing an amazing big band. I mean, the 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 like the horsepower coming from from you guys was like. Yeah, it was fun. And yeah, you and especially. New, yeah, it's... Like yeah, New York big bands. They uh, the horns are like they play. <sighs> from their gut <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's, it's a lot of Man. fun to drive yeah and we're doing a, a buddy rich tribute on april 5th on uh with my band out here at yoshi's so oh, tradition continues you know yeah so all all buddies like stuff from buddy's book basically? all buddies all, we're gonna do all buddy charts we do i try to do it like once a year you know it's like it's it's fun a lot of people like we do the traditional big band setup because we don't usually do that so i bring in yeah. extra horns we do the full the full monstrosity you know wow and we play uh you know, we play a selection of buddy stuff, you know, Fantastic. which is great. It's like going home. Yeah, that's great, man. So, so I want to jump backwards for one second, too, because I know you mentioned um, Scott Johnson and earlier when you were at, at PASIC last year and you have a you have a background. I mean, you you did drumline or drum corps and yeah. and yeah. high school and yeah. And oh, yeah, it was in the Bridgman. Yeah. For, yeah. The for Bridgman. Years. Exactly. Yeah. Legendary core and yeah, yeah, won a yeah. bunch of awards and yeah, high drums three years in a row. Yeah. So it was you great, and, it was great, and you had already you've been playing drum set before that. So you yeah, were, I was only playing drum set before that, and piano set. and piano and vibes and all that stuff. Yeah. but I didn't have any of that drum core uh, uh, horsepower in my hands yet. You know, yeah. And I, I, man, I'll tell you, the first time I I went, I'll never forget that audition. The first time I was, I was fifteen, and I went to the audition, and I remember just like, like I walked in, I never felt so little. And so helpless and <laughs> like, I'm like, I have no business being here next to wow. these, these, they, they were all throwing down fire. It was all this like, yeah. and everybody's trying to outdo each other. It's a typical drummer situation. It was in, and I just was like, then I just walked in, I walk in with my, like five A's. I'm like, <laughs> 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 these guys are playing with three S, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, I'm thinking like, oh, good. We're all going to play drums together. <laughs> Right, and it's just like you know, and I just was like, "Oh my God, what did I get myself into?" And it was so Uh, great, though. I was like, "I'll never forget that man." Like it was just, and I played bass drum that year. Still, still to this day, one of the greatest things I ever did that served me musically, like playing bass drum in a drum corps, like because you're like one string on a on a bass, like yeah, like you're open, you're only playing that one string. You know, that's right. your part. And you count on all the other strings to play exactly right, because you're only going to make a sound if you're all working together. Right. If five guys playing bass drum and everybody's one string and the, everybody should do that. That's, I mean, it, it makes yeah. you it makes you such a better musician. You you have to listen. You have to listen. I was just going to say you don't that. have a choice. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You don't have a choice. You yeah. know, you have to listen. You know, it's uh, one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. <laughs> that's great. No, I, I think that's so huge, too. I mean, just you have to listen. You know, I, it's yeah. like that's. I mean, and isn't that the key to everything, really? Yeah. Isn't it? You know, on and off the drums. Right. You know, you yeah. have to listen, you know. Uh, it's, it, you know, I, it was, yeah. I'm really lucky I had that experience. I try to give that to my students through stories and exercises and stuff, you know. But uh, I was just really lucky I had that. Yeah. Do you still have a pretty, a pretty active, um, teaching 
practice going on? <laughs> yeah, I have a, uh, um, uh, a years long waiting list. Um, and I don't say that, uh, happily or lightly. I yeah, feel yeah. it's, it's, it's actually gotten to the point where it's, um, not serving anybody who's waiting on it. And I have to figure out a way to do that. I'm actually going to blow the whole thing up and try to, uh, cause one of the things I'm going to do is I'm not doing any virtual stuff anymore. I'm done. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I, virtual education is a poor substitute for being in the room. And for me, education is extraordinarily intimate and emotional. Yeah. And I take it very seriously when I have another human soul in the room with me and they are there to explore their artistry and get better at what they want to do. You know, and every human being who comes in my studio is a unique story and unique individual, and I'm there to serve them. And I cannot do it over a screen the same level. So uh, I'm about to literally next week, I'm going to, you know, send out a whole new declaration of what is what it means to study with me. And it's uh, so I'm going to blow the whole thing up again because <laughs> I've had enough. I just had enough. I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do the virtual thing anymore. No, I understand. I do. I, I, you know, I know it was like a, 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 you know, a necessity for a while there because it was, it was great. Right. It was, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, great. But, was right. but, and right now I'm done. Right. It was great. And I thank you very much for your service. Goodbye. I'm not doing it. Yeah. That, that's me yeah. talking to zoom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I hear you. No, I tell you what, if, if, um, yeah, if you can do it back things in like person this again, are great. Yeah. like virtual has a place. Like this is great. Like this is really great. Right. But Absolutely. if we get on the instrument, like you and I, like if we literally got on the instrument, like it, the sound of a stick hitting a skin and groove and pocket and balance is never going to come to me through this yeah. screen or the sound the way it actually is in the room. And I don't give a crap how good the mics are because mm -hmm. I know what I'm talking about. I don't care about your preamps. I don't care about your software. I don't care about how you have your shit rigged. It's never, ever going to be the actual intent of the player on the instrument unless I'm in the room with them. Yeah. Yeah. All right? And I just have to, I can't, I just don't have the halfway gene. I don't have that. I don't have the, it's I know. good enough. I, know gene. You don't. I, yeah. I don't have that. And I have to be honest to myself. If I'm going to serve my students, I have to put my own mask on first, just like the oxygen, put your yeah. mask on first, then help others. And, you know, virtual, when I, get done with, when I get done with a lesson, I do not feel good about what I did for myself or for them. I don't feel like I, that's the, which is the opposite of how I feel when I'm in the room with them. So to serve, I'm going to actually, I have to be honest and I can't do it anymore. Amen, Tommy. Yeah. Yep. No, you've never been one to, to, um, not give the unvarnished truth. And I, I love you for that. Life's too short, Always. man. Yeah. It really is. It's yep. just too short. And, you know, you know, it's, it is, man. And it's, this is important to us. You know, I'm looking right. at your kits behind you, you know, and uh, you know, those kits tell a story. They also reflect who you are, you know, and I'm seeing the Zildjian gongs and all those things, the records up there and the picture of Charlie, you know, and so it's like, you know, this isn't, this is so much more than a round wooden barrel with skins on top. And yeah. we hit them. This is, this is, this is who we are. Right. You know, right you, yeah. I look at your drum room and I can literally see John to Christopher behind you. This is our, this is not, it's not an instrument. It's us. Right. Yeah. I yeah. Don't know how no, else to explain it. No, yeah. that that's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, it, you know, and it took me, it's funny you say that Tommy, it took me sort of like you know my in my later years to really understand that you know all the years we worked together when i was in the business side of it yeah i didn't i i guess i i i wasn't as sort of intimate with the instrument as i am now i at least in my mind you know and, and you're right i mean it's it's it's, well, it's you a reflection have, this, of who you we have are. separation you also don't you don't have any obligations to anyone to hit quotas you don't have to look at units sold anymore you, yeah. i mean those things you know, when you're working and you're making a career, I mean, that's, it's a business. That's right. part of the thing. And then when you get away from that, now you have distance, John, you have distance and you can actually, it's all for you yeah. now. It is all heart. Exactly. You know? And it's always been hard, but it's a business. It's a that's career. Right. I mean, you know, people, I mean, we're not children. This is a, it's called the music business for a reason. 
you know? And that's one of the reasons my residencies have been successful because I understand that it is, nothing matters unless there are butts in seats. Butts in seats. Right on. These are yeah. jazz clubs, not jazz charities. <laughs> Yeah. Butts in seats. They have to be in the black when I perform. They are not doing this out of the goodness of their heart. I have an obligation to keep this venue alive mm. during yeah. my spot. And that's the way I always looked at it. And I have no problem with that. That actually makes me feel good. I want a healthy place. I want to, I want to help venues be healthy, you know? And and you've always liked and I, and I was going to use the example like, you know, you created a, a book and a DVD that has become, you know, the Bible, the best selling, if not the very best selling, one of the best selling Groove Essentials. And in all the time I've known you, you, you like the challenge of creating, well, the book for the Lion King, you know, like creating something from scratch and, and having it be a success. And, and that's yet another example with the, you know, the residencies that you've done. Yeah. You know, Group Essentials was, you know, uh, Brick Drum. I, I, God, it's funny. You, you remember I was talking to you, like, I remember what, you know, Regatta, when we we met, yeah. we're, we're sitting, and I can still see you there. And it's like, and we had this, we're walking. I still see us walking to the elevator. I don't know why that, like, I remember that so well. Um, uh, That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I remember where I was when Rick Drum called me, and he was uh, president of uh, Vic Firth at the time. And he was like, right. you know, they had the rudiments poster, and they're like, you know, he said, we want you to do a groove poster, you know? And at this time I had already been, I was like 75% of the way done with groove essentials. All right. And, and I've been working on it for two years, you know, getting it ready, like really, really trying to write a unique educational uh, manifesto. Right. And he called me up and he said, we want to call it essential grooves. And I just started laughing. I was like, and I sent them like a picture of the cover. I said, it's a groove essentials. <laughs> <laughs> I said, as long as you're ready, as long, I said, as long as you're okay with using this title, I said, I'll write your poster for you. <laughs> and then it was tied in. And that poster is still being, I mean, there's, I think it was over a half million of them around the world right now. They, they're on like every band room, you know, around the, like around the world. You yeah. know, what's really funny. Check this out. Check this out. So um, when I met Aaron, my wife, she is a, uh, a teacher, right? She was a teacher. Now she's an administrator, but she was a, a history teacher then. Mm -hmm. And I met her. We, I, was, I should say I saw her and attacked her, basically. Like, <laughs> my name's Tommy, and we're going to go out. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was, we met at a bar. And stuff. So, uh, and it was really great. It was very organic. And, you know, uh, we we're going out and then she like comes up to me and she's like, she's like, why did you tell me who you are? And I'm like, what? I mean, like, she's like, she's like, I told my band director who my boyfriend is. And he, and she goes, do you know how stupid you made me look? Cause I don't know that you're on his wall. He, goes, he, goes, he brought me over to his wall and he pointed to you on his wall. And she's like, that she's is like, awesome. She's like, what else don't I know? <laughs> and I, I was, it was one of those really funny moments. I was oh. just like, I was like, I don't know. I said, I, uh, uh. <laughs> I just posed for the picture. Yeah. I didn't know. I was like, I don't know. I didn't know you had that poster up there. And she's like, it's a poster. Oh. She goes, it's the poster. You know? <laughs> she said, I had to go on Google and find out what you actually are. You know? <laughs> like, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Is that oh, that's like, awesome! Isn't that funny? It was, it, 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 she was so pissed, and she was like, "Oh my!" She was like, she's like, "You think for making me look like an idiot? Like I don't know who my boyfriend." Is. <laughs> you know, anyway, oh, one of those man. moments. That's a that's a beautiful story. I love it. <laughs> yeah, we still laugh about it to this day. Oh man! Yeah. Well, Tommy, I you know I I I want to be sensitive to the time that I'm taking out of your day here, and and um. We've it's been at this for an hour. I bet I'm not sure if anybody's even left after all this. I uh, know. No, I don't end, think so. Know, so. <laughs> this is no. This is this is great. We got we got a lot of great people watching. Some not so great people too, but a lot of great. Uh, you know, you know. Hey, it's drummers. What are you going to do? <laughs> but thank you so much, Tommy. Thank you so much for spending time today. And and uh, anything else you want to talk about? It that that upcoming projects or anything or stuff um, we should look uh, up for. Uh, uh, 
uh, you know, all, I, I mean, follow me on social. I put all my stuff up there. You know, I try to run a very transparent uh, identity and uh, I like to stir things up. And uh, so follow me on social and yeah, and we'll have a good time. Uh, you know, I have a text family now, which is kind of cool, which is, I really, really am into because uh, it has the direct one on one relationship with anybody who wants to talk to me. And that's you can find that number. Uh, it, it works in the United States, Canada and Mexico right now. And, uh, right. you know, there's 1500 people who have joined up. It's completely free. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I pay for it on my end. And uh, I literally have a one on one like relationship with people who want to talk to me. That's fantastic. And, yeah. Yeah. It's really, really cool. So I'm I'm. A, I'm always trying to explore um, technology to serve education, you know, and this, uh, the text fan thing is really, really cool. So it's on all my, the numbers on all my social media posts at the bottom of the hashtags and stuff. Yeah. So if anybody wants to join me on my text family, there it is. That's great. That's great. I've seen it. Yeah. In fact, that I think I didn't realize you had that many people. That's that's amazing. Yeah, it's it's, it's growing. You know, people, uh, it, the gratifying thing about it is that people who join it, don't leave and uh, they stay, you know, and uh, they can, you know, it's like any, you, know, you just have to text. You don't like it. You just text stop and you're out, you know, and, um, uh, but everybody loves it, you know, and I have a yeah. different connection, much different connection with that than I do with my social, which is, you know, a mosh pit. And you got to be really careful about how you, uh, about how things can snowball. Uh, and the text fam, everybody uh, is on their best behavior because it's one-on-one. Yeah, you know, and yeah. uh, the where the social media brings out the worst in humanity, the one on one texting thing brings out the best. That's what I've noticed. And I'm, I, I really like that. That's great. I really yeah. like that. And I prov- and I feel like I'm providing something for those 1500 people that they can't get anywhere else. So join me there if you want to see it. Fantastic. I'm going to join you. I haven't, I've, I've texted your other number, so I'll, yeah. oh, you I'll got, join Well, that. you got the bad phone. So just, get, yeah, just, yeah, text uh, the, uh, join it. I think you'll enjoy I will. it. I'll know? join it. Yeah. I think, I I think it's, it's really, really cool. Yeah. It's uh it's a definitely a different way to keep in touch with people that dig what you're doing. And I dig what you're doing. And I think, <laughs> and I, I dig know what everybody. You're doing, Johnny. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. All you're right. The well, best. I love you, man. You're I like, you you're too. like Garibaldi. I was saying like, you're like one of those, like Louis Belson is nobody who doesn't, nobody doesn't love John to Christopher. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm humbled. And, and I love you. You know, I, I do. love you too. so much. You know, you're one of the, one of the truly great guys. So thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here with you. Thank you, Tommy. It was an honor to have you today. Thanks buddy. Absolutely. Thank you for watching everybody. Big hand for Tommy. I go, I can hear everybody. Hands are clapping. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you soon.